Yeah, I just heard your song. It's quite a tearjerker. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. They're not all that sad. Don't worry. Well, it's all right. You know. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I just read this, and hopefully it was the right Kaylin Ro- uh, Robertson. Your birthday's Friday? Yeah. Happy yeah, early birthday. My birthday is Friday. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, Turning 18, older. 19, or? 19. Congratulations. Yes, Welcome. I have one more year to be a teenager. <laughs> True, but now you're considered a full-blown adult, and the the subject matter of some of your songs is far more mature than people in their 40s, so yeah, you're already ahead of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That the, comes with growing up, for sure. Yeah. Um, my mom was also attacked by a dog when she was young. She still has the scars on her hand and everything, so I can remotely understand what you're going through or what you've been through, so... Yeah, it shows a lot of strength. Um, did you ever get over a fear of dogs, or do you still have a fear of dogs because of the attack? I actually have my own dog right now. His name is Mater, and he's a chocolate lab, which is um, the dog that attacked me was a black lab, so they're very close to the same type of dog. And uh, I'm actually, it's strange, I'm not afraid of dogs at all. I think it's just some kind of strength that I naturally have that makes me not scared. Mm. Um but, you know, I've I've talked to a lot of other dog bite victims who do fear dogs for the rest of their lives because of an attack. Right. And um, the best thing I can do to encourage them is to just try to face their fears and stuff. Because not all dogs are bad. You know, most of them are not. Right. Um, but things do happen, and you just have to learn that there are bad things in the world, but they're not all bad. Right. Understandable. Yeah. No, it seems like you went through a lot from an early age. I mean, it's been almost 10 years since you went through that. And now you're a part of the seedy underbelly of the music industry and country music. So you can survive all sorts of things. Absolutely. (laughs) And music is what helped me get through that. You know, I always had a passion for performing and singing and writing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really take it seriously until, you know, I was attacked by a dog. And I sat at home bored to tears while I was, you know, healing before I went back to school. Mm. And during that time, I was just making videos of myself and singing cover songs. And that was when I really realized that music was going to be something that was powerful in my life and it was going to help me overcome anything. Right. And what made you decide to go into the country music genre? I mean, you are you are from the Carolinas, so I would have assumed that, uh, you know, that that's a prevalent genre over there, but... You know, was it something that you grew up listening to? It was always played in the house. Like, what, why country? So it was something that I kind of evolved into. Um, so I'm originally from South Carolina. Okay. And when I was younger, my dad used to play country stations all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kind of, when I grew older, like middle school age, I stopped listening to country, honestly. And I was into pop, and I started singing, like, Adele type of stuff, um, like pop jazz. But... As I grew older, I started to <clears throat> listen to country again because it reminded me of my, like, early childhood. Mm. And I started to go to more country concerts than I ever have. And I was like, country is, you know, country's my jam more mm. than it is pop. And so, yes, it has to do a little bit with where I live. But mm. I think I've just kind of evolved and grown into that um, country scene. And I've learned to really love it. I go out to Nashville a lot. And, of course, the country scene is huge there. Right. Um, but it's just... It's a really tight-knit community in the country world, and everyone's just so nice and friendly. Right. So I think that's why I kind of lean towards country. Makes sense. Yeah, we're going to be covering the Driftwood concert in Doheny Beach this weekend. So it's a country music festival for Saturday, Sunday. That sounds fun. It's right on the beach, so it is. You know, I never really got into country music until recently, and it's just two totally different crowds from, like, because I grew up listening to, oh, to heavy metal. So, like, the metal okay. crowd and the country crowd are, like, two totally different worlds. Like, yeah, you know, like, I equate it to the difference between shooting a bullet and throwing one. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. Well, see, I yeah. listen to all types of music. Right. I went to, um, I recently went to Coachella, which mm-hmm. is, you know, EDM pop music. Right festival and i love that stuff but you know when it comes to stuff that i choose to write about and and i like the way that country music really tells a story right and it fits your voice quite well yes because i mean i don't have a strong southern accent or anything but i am from carolina and it comes out every now and then (laughs) right 
Yeah, but that, that's the fun part is that you know you you're from over there. You your accent doesn't really show, so you could kind of blend in more of the pop country style. That way, it's not too twangy. Yeah, which is what I do. I mean, I love old country. Mm. Don't get me wrong, but my voice doesn't fit for that, and I right. don't try to push it in that area. I try to stick to the pop country stuff. Mm. Um, and again, pop is something that I used to do, so. I like to mix the two genres, which many people are doing right now in the industry. Right. And how supportive has your family been with all of this? Because, I mean, you know, they they watched you go through it, and as fi- as much physical pain as it was for you to go through it, obviously for your parents it's in a huge emotional struggle because, you know, they pro- possibly felt that they didn't protect you enough at nine years old when you were their biggest responsibility, or at least you and your siblings. You know, so yeah. how supportive have they been in all of this? They have been my biggest supporters since day one. I mean, I have a sister, and they just, they've always given everything that they have to us, and they've given us plenty of opportunity to figure out what we want to do in life and what we love and what we don't like. Mm. And so, I mean, they right now, they front the money for what I love to do. They pay for me to fly out to places to meet new people and to just kind of grow my music and grow my career and so i mean without them i don't think i'd really be doing this because without that that support it's really really hard right um so yeah i have a lot of support behind me yeah and now that you're sitting there and you're playing music and you're having fun with it you know what is like some of the more like oh my god i can't believe this is happening moments like the surreal stuff that you've experienced so far you know, obviously, besides the St. Jude's thing, but, you know, in, yeah. in your career. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so, in terms of, so I have a band, and mm. every weekend that we play out, there's some where I'm just like, this just doesn't seem real to me. And when I'm on stage, I am in my element. Like, I'm in my zone. I don't even usually recognize people in the crowd. I'm just having a good time on the stage. Mm-hmm. But when I do look out in the crowd, sometimes I'm so amazed to see just, like, how happy it makes other people feel when I sing, when I play music. And then what's even more impressive is whenever I play my originals that these people have never heard before in their entire lives, you know, by the second chorus, I'll see them singing along. And that means, you know, I'm doing something <coughs> good. You know, I'm writing something catchy. Right. So uh, that's a big accomplishment for me. And that's one of the things that is like, wow, this is so, so unreal. Yeah, absolutely. No, it, it sounds like that would be a huge moment. Has there been a moment with your contemporaries, like people that you've been fan of, you know, since you since you were a child, that now are considered your colleagues and are like, hey, Kaylin, great job. We loved you on stage or thanks for opening for us or whatever. Um, so I wish that would happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there right now. We're trying to start, you know, opening up for some bigger names, and mm-hmm. which we are. But of course, no nobody that I fangirl over yet. Okay. Um, that I've opened up for, but it is I have opened up for some bigger acts that you know were very impressed with me, mm. and they've done a lot. There's a band here in the Carolinas called Cowboy Mouth. They're actually from um, Louisiana, but it was a big deal opening up for them, and they were very nice and stuff. So we're getting there. We're hoping to open up for some bigger names this coming up year, and uh, just get our own name out there too. Nice. And who do you fangirl out for? Oh, gosh. So I'm a fangirl of Sam Hunt, mm. uh, Thomas Rhett. Okay. When I was younger, I was a huge fangirl of Miley Cyrus. Like, if I had to do yeah. a duet with one person, it would be Miley Cyrus. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I, my buddy finally played me a Sam Hunt song, and it was called uh, Body Like a Back Road. And, yeah. And I finally, like, when he was like, his mistake was telling me what the title of the song was first. Because oh. cause he's like, oh, there's this great song called Body Like a Back Road. And my first reaction was, and, you know, what what's the sequel to the song to it? You know, Breath Like a Truck Stop? Because, yeah. you know, cause, you know I'm from the, I, I live by the beach. So when I think back road, I think dirty, I think gravelly, I think muddy. Like, it doesn't sound like a compliment. And then you listen to the lyrics <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, I get it now. But just the title alone. Like, I picture, like, the radio DJ being given the song yeah. list. Uh, like, you know, song three of this hour, you know, new release, Body Like a Back Road. I'm like, that just doesn't sound like a compliment. It doesn't sound like a compliment. <laughs> you know? No, but I just love, I love how Sam Hunt is just so clever with mm. the way he wrote about a back road, which so many country artists do. It's overdone. Right. He took it and 
like ran with it in a completely different direction that nobody's heard and everyone's like wow this is so clever yeah no he did yeah. a great job with it and he's got a good voice so i was i was really impressed it was like like i said it was the title that threw me for a loop <laughs> yeah do you do you have any song titles like that that'll throw people for a loop They're like wait a minute that doesn't really sound complimentary but it's actually like a great fun song um, I don't think I have any contradictory titles, but I do have songs that sound happy that are actually very like sad or mm. sassy. But okay, not not any titles I can think of. All right, uh, like what's one of your sassier songs that sound happy, but it's really kind of a bit uh, of emotional drain, shall we say? Um. Oh gosh, let me think. I've written so many songs. I know, it's like trying to pick your favorite child, so I get it. I know. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I have, so I have one called Running that's very slow. Uh-huh. Um, but it's kind of like a happier type of slow. Okay. I have a lot of songs that are melancholy and stuff like that. But th- none of those songs are out yet, so I don't want to give names and stuff. But right. they will be coming out hopefully very soon where it's trying to get those recorded and get those done. Right, and we never know. The song title could change by the time you get to the studio. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. That always happens to me because I'll come up with a song title and then someone's like, no, that sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now is your sister in your band with you? or? No, she actually is probably the least musically inclined person in my family. <laughs> is that she a nice way of saying she's tone deaf? Family. Yes, that is a very nice way of saying my sister is tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> what sports does it's your sister so play? Funny. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, that is so funny because like, when we were younger, we would be in the car like singing along or like tapping our feet, and my dad would be like, "Like Shelby, um, you're off rhythm." Uh, like, like we were a little worried about her. <laughs> and- and that's no, when your sister plays hockey. Okay, I was gonna say, and that's when your sister said, "Screw this, I'm going into soccer." But hockey makes sense. Ice hockey or field hockey? Ice hockey. Ooh. Oh, ice hockey. See, so she and really is coordinated. Oh yeah. Uh, you got to be coordinated to play ice hockey. You got knives on your feet and you're skating around with a stick <laughs> in hand, chasing a little black rubber tire. Oh yeah. Well, I actually I used to figure skate. So okay. I'm the one who even got her interested in skating in general. But of course, she's the tomboy in the family, so she's like, mm-hmm. I want to do hockey, not figure skating. <laughs> Is she your younger sister or older sister? She's older. She actually goes to NC State University. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, do you have plans of going to college or at least taking college courses online, since that's a huge option now? Yeah. So I've been doing online school since sophomore year for music okay and it's been working really well for me because it gives me the room to grow and to work and have that extra time so i am probably going to stick with the online schooling for at least a year or two right um it's always also of course been you know hard it's been a dream of mine to be a normal kid sometimes and just go to a regular school go to a university Mm. and so we'll see we'll see how it pans out i might do online for two years and then transfer to a university and get that um in class experience normal's overrated (laughs) you're right it is overrated my life is definitely not normal right but with your life it's going to kind of be hard to relate to like the quote-unquote normal people you know that sat there and went k through 12 in the same town and they're sitting there like, oh, I went on vacation to Europe. And then, like, a year from now, you're going to be like, oh, I opened up for Sam Hunt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, I did, all the way through freshman year, I did go to school. Mm. So part of my life was very normal. And then right. I just decided to go a different route for my friends. And mm. um, they still love me and support me. And But we just live different lives. Right. But at least you're still friends with them, so that's the important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, like, how do you remain grounded in all of this? Because, you know, you're you're about to turn 19. You know, you've been, you've been on, well, on, in the music scene f- since you were 15, perform- at least performing live with, uh, with your band and on stage and everything else. You know, how do you remain yeah. sane and grounded with all this stuff? Well, so, I mean, my band, number one, they're extremely supportive, and mm-hmm. we're like a family now. And so... 
just having that support and then the support of my, my real family. Um, and then I, I do go to a school that's part online, part in class. So I have a lot of school interaction that kind of keeps me sane. Um, when I'm busy with a bunch of music, sometimes it's nice to just come to school and have that normal interaction with other students. Right. But so just the support of a lot of people has been helping me stay grounded. Yeah. And your sister will just check you into the glass if something goes wrong. <laughs> yes, me and her don't always get along, but every now and then she'll send a nice text like good luck before a gig, and it makes me happy. So I know that she loves me deep down somewhere inside of there. <laughs> <laughs> well, how much older than you is she? Uh, So she is 21. Okay. So, so not too much, about yeah. three years apart. Yeah, so you guys are really close in age, so it's always going to be like that sibling sibling rivalry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's when you guys will probably hit like 40, 45 is when you'll really start getting along. Yeah, well, I'll be like, I'm so sorry about the way I treated you. Right. I know you're musically inclined, but I should have made fun of you. Right. You're, <laughs> you're both going to sit there and go, look, I'm tired. Let's just be nice to each other. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, we're already starting to get like that. Well, that's good. Yeah, and your folks obviously love it. Do you only have one sister, or do you have any other siblings, or? Um, no, just one. Okay, so you're the baby, so that's where the rivalry is really going to dig in. Oh, yeah, I used to get her in trouble all the time when uh, I was younger. She hated it. It's all, it's always the, it's always the younger ones that cause all the problems. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it. Uh, I'm teasing, I'm an only child, I have no idea. Okay. So, <laughs> Yeah, I can't relate to that. Yeah, you know, like, with us, we look at people that have siblings, and we're like, you guys have each other. Why don't you get along? And then we'll come home after, like, seeing our friends fight or our cousins fight when we were kids and go, you know what? I kind of like this being alone thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Right. Each, each position, you know, you have your ups and downs. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. But no, it sounds like you're having fun with everything, and you know, I, I like your song styles. I like that you have this strength in you to overcome the dog attack, and then just be like, nope, it was a black lab that, that did it. I'm getting a brown one. Yeah, well, I actually had, I already had the chocolate lab. He was a puppy. Okay. Um, and we we left him at home when we went on the trip where mm. I got attacked, and then we came back, and my parents were like, okay, well you know, are we going to have to give this dog away? And I was the one who was like, uh-uh, you're not giving my puppy away. Right. You're and like, this so isn't the dog that did of, me wrong. Yeah, exactly. There's just some kind of strength that I don't know that I have. Right. That not everybody has. But I try to share that with other people because not everybody has the same personality. So. Right. And now the next one's going to be a Mastiff. You're like, I'm just going bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so like, what is it? You know, how you're 19 years old, so obviously, you know, dating always comes into play at some point. I hate these dating questions, but like, how do you have a relationship on the road? Um, so I actually am talking to somebody right okay. now. Um, but I just I keep I keep my relationships in my personal life very very low key. Um, and I think it's important to keep it that way. I have to keep my personal life separate from my business life. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been raised in a way to where I can do that. And I'm actually very good at it. Um, but so, I mean, I go on dates with kind of anybody. Like I don't tie myself down to just one person right now. Cause I'm right. so young. Right. Um, but yeah, so it's not too hard. Makes sense. You know, and you just made it sound like you're a sailor that has somebody in every port. So let's, yeah. <laughs> Let's make that sound a little nicer, you know. No, you you you're young, you you're seeing what's out there, you're you're still enjoying yourself. We get it. Yeah. You know, without being but too much of a child, you know, cuz we got to keep the younger kids happy too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my parents are very are very good at, you know, letting me go out on dates and letting mm -hmm. me hang out with friends and keeping my social life, you know, up to par along with my business life. So, mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah, you're finding that balance because it's not all work, and then it's like trying to blow off steam and you go nuts at the end of the day. Exactly. Well, so I I will sit there and overwork myself on something, 
to yeah. where it drives me crazy. And I'm like, I just need to get out of the house and just as as weird as it sounds, I just need to be normal for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so that's where my social interaction comes in, going on dates, hanging out with friends, um, stuff like that. And I think it's important to have that balance because mentally somebody can't just handle like working all the time. Mm-hmm. And my parents are good about, you know, helping me balance that out. And what is your, nor- you know, what do you consider normal or what would be your normal to get away from work? Um, around here, it's going to country concerts at Walnut Creek Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to football games at other high schools. Mm-hmm. Um, or even just going to a friend's house and watching a movie. Just simple things that get me away from all the work, work, work. And I think that a lot of celebrities and stars out there don't get that time to themselves um, to just kind of hang out and chill out. But I think that it's important to have that time so that mentally, you know, you're healthy and you're strong. Mm. Makes sense. Now, but isn't going to country concerts still kind of like work because you're in the industry? (laughs) Well, yes and no. I just, I like to even though I sing music, I like to go listen to other people sing. So then it's like, oh, yay, I'm not the one on the stage. I just get to sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> right. But isn't there like a part of you that clicks in your head? It's like, ooh, I like that dance move right there. Maybe I should incorporate that into my into my rhythm. Oh, I like that bass riff over there. Oh, I like that drum beat here. Maybe I could like do a twist. Like, you know, it's got to be somewhere in there that like the work mode kicks in when the music is playing. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I really feel inspired when I go to other people's concerts. I like to pull from other people's performances and try to incorporate it into mine, find things that I like. Um, So, yes, it's work, but at the same time, it's like the more fun side of work. Right. Okay, because, yeah, that's what you got to worry about. Like with me, because I'll start reading stuff and then – I'll pay, you know, I'll find somebody's word choices and I was like, Oh, I haven't even used that word in a while. That's like better than me now. So like I get competitive with myself and somebody else's writing of somebody who I've never even met before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And when you go to Nashville and you go, <sighs> I participate in writers rounds a lot. Mm-hmm. You see that there's just so many artists out there that you can learn from. Um, I mean, it's unbelievable how many artists are just doing the same thing out mm-hmm. there. Um, but it's really inspiring, too. So what is a writer's round? So a writer's round is where a bunch of songwriters um, go up on stage, and they usually have, like, four to five chairs set up mm-hmm. with mics, and they all just sit next to each other, and they go one by one, and they each play their own song that they've written. And that cycle goes around about, you know, like, three times. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's just a time, yeah, it's a time for people to share their music, basically. All right. But, like, do you find that people have, like, the same sound as everybody else? Like, trap rap has become the same sound of hip-hop. Like, you can take the last seven trap rap artists and put their big hits on one album, and it could have been the same person. Like, do you feel that (laughs) way going on at these uh, these events? I do sometimes. Um a lot of country music does sound the same. Okay. And I'll tell you that right now that sometimes it's hard to write because I'm like, okay, well, how can I make my song sound different from everyone else's mm-hmm. in the country industry? And that's a really hard thing to do. But something that's important to learn as a songwriter is that it's okay to pull from other songs and to kind of mimic other songs but make mm-hmm. them different because right. they were successful for a reason. Right. Now you just got to, like, have a punk rock backup band at some point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, K- you know, Kaylin Robertson and Rancid. or Well, Rancid's more metal, but you get the idea. You yeah. Know, just throw everybody yeah, for a loop. something in there to make it. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I actually, so when our band, my band goes and plays out, we do a lot of covers, and then we throw in my originals. But when we do covers, we do things like Paramore. Mm-hmm all the way to, like, Hank Williams Jr., nice. like, completely different. But people people just love it. It's fresh to their ears when they hear a different genre. Right. And actually, I've gotten a lot of compliments when it comes to my pop rock covers that I do. People are like, oh, I love your voice on that song. So it's mm-hmm. good to hear people's feedback, too, when you explore different genres. Oh, that's awesome. Has there been a cover song that you've done that, for some reason, didn't work for you? Um, 
I mean, I actually surprised me. I sing a lot of male songs, a lot of male country songs. And so every now and then I'll find one that's just not, I'm like, I'm singing about a girl and I just can't do it. <laughs> okay. It might get you a completely different audience than you expected. True. Yeah. Well, sometimes the reason why I do that is because a lot of people like to hear a girl singing a guy's song because mm -hmm. they've never heard that before, and it's different for them, and it's refreshing, and it's like, wow, I've never heard it like that. Hey, Joan Jett's I Love Rock and Roll is the greatest cover song ever, and that was originally a group of guys singing about a 17-year-old girl. She flipped it to her singing about a 17-year-old guy, and it's the greatest yeah. cover ever, so... Wow. Not too many people know that, that Joan Jett's I Love Rock and Roll is a cover song. I have no idea. Yeah. You're and educating her, me today. Well, you're what, I'm older than you, so it happens. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that that is the greatest cover song ever, and it's one of the cover songs that I actually like far superior to the original. Wow. Yeah. The That's inspiring. Now I need to go do that. <laughs> yeah. The original was by an English group called Arrow, and I believe it came out in 76 or 77. Okay, wow. Yeah. And then Joan Jets came out in 81, so she got the rights to it. She did the cover, and that's her biggest hit ever, and it's still the it's the best rock cover. Yeah, well, that's a big thing, too, right now, in the, mostly in the pop industry, is I've noticed they're taking a lot of older cover songs mm -hmm. and making them more EDM pop. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really cool to hear that because my dad will be in the car and he's like singing along to it. And he's like, how do you know this song? <laughs> yeah. Or worse, you're asking Maybe your dad, how do you know him? Yeah. <laughs> I was. But then I remembered like I've heard this before, right. but a different version. So I was like, oh, it's probably a cover. Or what you could do is take an EDM original and then make it a country version. I could, couldn't I? You know, spin it that way. That'd be really cool. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Yeah, and then at some point you just drop the bass, and then you have the beat going with it, and confuse the hell out of everybody. Well, see, that's like the new normal now with country right. music is they're using all this electronic, you know, drums and beats and stuff to make to make music. So right. I don't know if it would take them that much for a loop because it's already happening. Makes sense, you know. But hey, if if hip hop is a thing, EDM country could be its own thing. So. <laughs> Yes, I love that you just said hip hop. Every time I say that, people are like, "What's that?" I found out about it about a month ago, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" And then I heard it, and I was just like, <laughs> "Only in America." <laughs> Only We're, in America is hip hop a thing. Yeah, you know, the French inv invented rap music in the 1940s, and then you know it took over the urban culture in America in the 70s, and then 30, 40 years after that. Now we got hip hop, and I was like, "Sure." <laughs> oh god, yeah. it's only played. It's only played in like country clubs. Like every now okay. and then, they'll throw in a hip hop song, and sometimes they're actually pretty good. And sometimes you're like, "No." <laughs> and sometimes you're like, "How? How did this guy get studio time?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He probably paid for it. <laughs> right. Time. Yeah, but the fact that it got recorded and it's being played in a club would confuse the hell out of me. <laughs> like there has to be some song at some point that like yeah I live in Southern California so I could only imagine being in a club here and then out of nowhere a hip hop song comes up while everybody's on the dance floor I know myself I just stop and look like towards the DJ booth trying to figure out what I was listening to why <laughs> not even That's necessarily what well like to me I just start laughing like I I love crazy quirky like, totally inappropriate things. I mean, not, yeah. like, inappropriate that are, like, degrading to people, you know. Yeah. But, like, some things that shouldn't be funny that really are, you know, like, laughing at a funeral, like, that type of thing. Oh, okay. You know, like, not, like, inappropriate timing, but just not bad, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you're yeah. referring to hip hop here. Yeah, so, like, I, I'd, be, I'd be laughing hysterically. I'd be like, oh, my God, this is real. I can't believe I'm living through this. It is very real. It's becoming yeah. a thing. I mean, look, Florida Georgia Line just, um, I forget what the song is called, but they teamed up with VB Rexa, who's completely pop, mm. like pop R&B almost. Right. 
So it's a thing. Hip hop is a thing. Right. And uh, Florida Georgia Line teamed up with Nelly on a song. Oh, yeah. Nelly is like the biggest country fan ever. Yeah. And it makes me so happy because he does a bunch of country covers. Right. And isn't he from Georgia or Alabama? I do not know. Okay. I thought he was somewhere from the South, but. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And the South gets a bad rap, by the way. I've been to Atlanta and I was like, this city's fun. I don't know why people make so much fun of the South. <laughs> I love it here. Mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade the place that I live for the world. I mean, I've been to I actually just came back from LA. Mm. And I I love it in LA, but it's just it doesn't feel like home to me. Um yeah. so I don't think I could be out there for super long. Well, that and you can get like 20 acres for a third of the price that we can get for a shack. <laughs> Exactly. I feel like over here I'm spoiled, and then I went over there and went into somebody's one bedroom apartment that was like half a million dollars, and I was like, oh, yeah. I can't. I don't. I don't know how you do it. Right. <laughs> and then they just have a giant like Great Dane living there in a studio. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's animal cruelty in my opinion. No. Uh, but uh, my cousin had got transferred to to an office in Kentucky and worked there for like three years. I call him up and I was like, so what's it like? He's like, dude. You know, if if I tried to buy this house in California, I'd be working for at least 150 years. Wow. Yeah, you know, and he had, like, lake access. And I was just like, I'm like, what is lake access? He's like, okay, really? I own, like, part of the lake. And I'm just like. <laughs> How? <laughs> yeah. And like, it, it doesn't register, like, out here that you own part of the lake. Yeah. You know, it, it's like five acres and like a quarter of the lake. And I'm just like, I don't know how you own a quarter of a lake, but so long as you own part of the lake, that's still impressive. Yeah. Well, and so in the traffic there, mm. I'm the most impatient like driver sometimes because I'm mm. always trying to get somewhere at a certain time. Right. I mean, I would have to cancel all my plans if I lived in L.A. I would have oh, yeah. to make like one plan each day. Oh, yeah. It's it's getting so bad that it's like, hey, I got to be in downtown at 730, you know, the events at 730. So I'm leaving at a quarter to four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know that I don't know that I can handle that. But I do. I will say I love it out there and I love how much opportunity um, there is over there. Right. I still got to make it to, to Nashville to see what the country scene's like out there, just because it sounds like it'd be fun. Yeah, well, it, <clears throat> Nashville to me is like, I call it like a little big city. Like, even mm. though it's huge, mm-hmm. there the traffic isn't as horrible, and like, you can drive downtown, right. and I mean, the traffic is a fourth of what L.A. is. Right. And I but assume the people are still city. nicer. <laughs> or is it that like I mean, southern nice? Or is it like yes. that southern nice where they're still being mean but they're using like polite vocabulary? Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, that's mean. All right, I found out what that means. They, you guys are mean. <laughs> they were mean in an indirect type of way. Right, but then when you find out, it's like, oh, bless your heart means God, you're dumb. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, found basically. I found out what that meant when I was in Georgia visiting. You know, I'm just like because my friend's wife is, is from there. He's originally from here, and I asked her. I was like, "All right, so what does bless your heart mean?" She, he starts laughing, uh, and she's like, <laughs> "It means that you have a good heart, and you know, God." Bless. And I'm like, no, "No, no, 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 tell me the real meaning," because he's laughing, and I know it's bad. And so she finally confessed that it means, "Oh, you're a big dummy." And I'm like, "All right, so you guys are nice when you're mean. I give you guys credit for that." <laughs> Basically, it's really deceiving. It is, you know, it's that southern charm. It's it's because you have those Irish Scottish roots in there, and then when the Celts speak English, it sounds really nice and charming too, and they're being mean to you too. <laughs> yeah, but see, you're having fun with it. I'm glad you have a sense of humor. I'm glad, even through oh, the yeah. face of adversity, that you're able to to laugh at everything because you've come a long way in ten years from being a, being attacked to being a strong person. So I commend you for it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I, again, I think there's just something that is I've always like had inside of me some type of strength that not a lot of people have, and I try to share that with other people through my music. And um, I mean, a lot of my songs that I do write are inspirational. But then I have the side of me that's like, okay, I am a normal person. 
I go to concerts, I do all these things, I go on dates, I hang out with friends, and so I write songs that are just, you know, fun. Right. Um, and, like, commercially ready for the radio type of songs versus inspirational. And so I right. like that I have that variety. Right. And you can be an, inter, uh, an uh, excuse me, an inspirational speaker. And I'm sure you've done yeah. some of that already, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Since, um, since sophomore year when I was 14, I started touring the nation, actually going around the world to schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and we would talk to kids in these schools about bullying and stuff and just try to inspire them. And what's really cool about those tours is that, you know, I was the same age as the kids that I was talking to. Mm. So, you know, it makes them actually pay attention. No offense to older people. They don't want to pay attention to them. Right. But, um, you know, when I would go to these schools, it would just be amazing to see how a peer can really affect another person's life. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. Your dad will tell you something 50 times over and you're like, yeah, whatever. And then somebody else that you know that isn't related to you will say the same thing. You're like, huh, that's kind of prolific. (laughs) Yes, he hates that. Mm -hmm. He hates that. Because he'll try to tell me stuff that, in my head, I know it makes sense, but Mm -hmm. because he's saying it to me, I don't want to listen. Right. I don't want to do what he's telling me to do. But then somebody else, maybe like a producer or just somebody who has a little bit more knowledge who isn't related to me, Mm -hmm. will say the same exact thing, and then all of a sudden it's like a light switch. And my right. head goes off. And then that's okay. Right. And then that's when the shoe whizzes by your head and going, Hey, didn't I tell you that six months ago? Oh yeah. <laughs> all the time. I mean this happens all the time. Right. Yeah. And no, we're not condoning your dad throwing your shoes at you or his shoes at you. This is America. It's not it's not the rest of the world where that's acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, before I let you go, I want to ask about the St. Jude thing. What was the reaction from St. Jude's hospitals, you know, for you writing this song, especially for them? Because you went through your own thing, but you also said that you didn't, that you had to be in an adult hospital. And an adult hospital is nowhere, like, near as emotionally concerned with your well-being of let's just get you healthy and get you out of here. So, like, what was their reaction yeah. to you writing for them? Well, so I remember... I remember the first time that me and my mom went to St. Jude and we had the whole tour, which if you haven't done that, you need to do it um, because it's completely life changing. It changes every time you see that St. Jude ad come up, you know, it's everywhere. Every time I see it now, it makes me think a little bit differently because I took that tour. And so the first time we toured it, I mean, it almost brought me to tears. Like I was going to have to go to the bathroom and just like sit and cry, have a cry session for a little bit because it's just, I mean, it's, sad but it's also very inspiring Mm -hmm. and the way that hospital makes you feel is just like I mean it's incredible and so it was such an honor for them to have me play on National Music Gifts to St. Jude Kids Day Mm -hmm. um, for the kids themselves and you know you could tell some of the kids in there had had a rough day and that was their one time to kind of get away um, from all the stress that they were going through. And it was just, it was absolutely, I mean, I can't explain it in words mm-hmm. how amazing it was to see the face on these kids just light up. And, you know, some of their parents were crying, which of course I hate because then I'm on stage like, it's okay. Right. And now you're <laughs> going to cry. Back my own tears. And then it's just a whole crying session. But I, I didn't, I held them in this time. And that was because in my head I was like, I wrote a song called Fighter in Me, Mm -hmm. and I'm singing it here today for these kids who are sick, who are ill, who are literally, you know, dying. And so I was like, I have to be their strength. Mm -hmm. I can't break down. I can't cry. I have to follow the own lyrics of my song. I have to be a fighter in in this situation, and I have to show them that there's a fighter inside of each and every one of them, too. Right. You didn't want to turn it into a whole Nicholas Sparks movie. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, well, that's awesome. And the kids' reaction was was great, I assume. Oh, yeah. They were, I mean, those kids there are just amazing, and they're so sweet. And they kind of reminded me of me when I was little. Like, mm-hmm. even though I was attacked by a dog and basically had my face ripped off and reattached, mm-hmm. I went to school confident. Like, I was, it was almost like breaking your arm and wanting your friends to sign your cast. Right. Like, well, let's hope they didn't sign your like, face. Look at me. No, they didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> but it's that attitude of like, oh, look what I went through. Like, I'm cooler than you type of attitude. And those right. kids just seem to have the same, like, 
just sweet and just happy all the time and confident attitude, right. which well, is really inspiring. Hey, scars make for good stories. Absolutely. Yeah. And you got a great story, and I'm looking forward. To, and the album just dropped, right? The new album? Um, I have an EP. Yeah, Your EP, that's okay. Play, that just came out. All right. Uh, four yeah, tracks, five tracks? On album. It is four tracks. All right, four track EP, okay. Yeah. yeah. And now, on the EP, what's your favorite of the four, and which one should people be looking out for? My favorite of the four is, ooh, this is a hard one. My favorite of the four has got to be My Love, which is the name of the EP. Mm. Um, and the reason why I love it is just because it's a fun song, and it's different from everything that I've ever done. Um, it's kind of like, it's almost like EDM country. Mm -hmm. It's very, very pop country. Okay. And it's just a feel-good song. Awesome. So that's my favorite. I suggest listening to that. That's fantastic. Kaylin, where can we find you social media wise, website, everything, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, you know, et cetera? Yeah. So all of my social media is at Kaylin Robertson, K A Y L I N R O B E R S O N. And then my website is just www.kaylinrobertson.com. Thank you for keeping that simple for everybody. <laughs> You're welcome. It took a while to make it that simple because <laughs> when I was in seventh grade, I made all my usernames something ridiculous. Of course. We yeah. all have to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. It was yeah. like, I love figure skating at gmail.com. Right. It's just ridiculous. It had nothing to do with my name. Right. I love figure skating dot X23, you know, hyphen <laughs> 1997, you know, wh whichever, Tennessee. Uh, yeah. Okay. I get it. Well, yeah, that, that's great. But now it's simple, and you guys can find my stuff easily. Perfect. Well, please keep in touch, and I look forward to talking to you again when the full album's done. Awesome. Thank you so much for interviewing me today. Absolutely. Thank you, and take care.